<clears throat> Thank you for the opportunity to present our work uh, on clonal hematopoiesis and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this work will be presented by Dr. Hin Bouzid at the plenary session tomorrow. <clears throat> so as Dr. Gobriel just mentioned, hematologic malignancies have precursor conditions. We identified a precursor condition for myeloid malignancies like acute myeloid leukemia and myelodysplastic syndrome that we termed clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential. CHIP. CHIP arises when a random mutation in a certain set of genes uh, affects a hematopoietic stem cell, leading to its clonal expansion. If additional cooperating mutations are acquired later in life, blood cancers may result. In 2014, we performed a study in which we identified the prevalence of CHIP as a function of age, shown here. You can see that under the age of 40, CHIP is quite rare, but it increases in prevalence with each decade of life. Those who are 70 or older have about a 10 to 30% likelihood of having CHIP. Now, of course, it is not a surprise that CHIP was associated with blood cancers. After all, having one of these CHIP mutations is the first hit on the path to cancer. However, we knew that the hematopoietic stem cells that harbored the CHIP mutations still retained the ability to differentiate into all of the cells of the blood system, including immune cells like lymphoid cells, myeloid cells, uh, as well as platelets and red blood cells. So we hypothesized that these CHIP mutations may be associated with altered function of these innate immune cells. And this has uh, adverse health consequences that have been studied in several different conditions now. For example, CHIP is associated with an increased risk of atherosclerosis, ischemic heart failure mortality, type 2 diabetes, thrombosis, and COPD. In this study, we wondered whether CHIP had any association with Alzheimer's disease, of course, another chronic disease of aging. We assessed for an association in three ways, a longitudinal population-based cohort study, a case control study for Alzheimer's disease, as well as examining brain pathology from people without dementia. Consistently, in all of these studies, we surprisingly found that CHIP was associated with a reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease or Alzheimer's disease-related pathology. A meta-analysis of our results is shown in this uh, graph here, you can see that there is about a 35% decreased risk of Alzheimer's disease in CHIP carriers. Could this be a causal link? So it turns out that the cell type that is probably most important in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease is an immune cell, resident immune cell of the brain called microglia. It is currently believed that microglia derive from embryonic development but do not have any contribution from the bone marrow thereafter. We wondered, could we find the same mutations that are present in the circulating blood cells in the brain immune cell fraction of chip carriers? To do this, we identified eight chip carriers who donated their brains after death. We had formulated a scheme to sort out the microglia using flow cytometry, and then we looked for the same mutations to be present in the microglia. And surprisingly, we found that seven out of the eight chip carriers had mutated microglia in their brain. What was even more remarkable was that in two carriers studied in detail, between 40 to 80% of the microglia had the mutations, suggesting a vast replacement of normal microglia with these mutated cells, which we hypothesize may promote protection from Alzheimer's disease. So to summarize, CHIP is surprisingly associated with a decreased risk of Alzheimer's. The same mutations detected in blood can be found in the immune cells in the brain. And we think that CHIP may reduce the risk of AD by supplementing a failing microglial system during aging. Thank you. <laughs>